What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna head underwater. We're gonna talk about the Tokyo Rig. Now, Tokyo Rig was invented to punch heavy mats and be a different look, but I use it in a different way. I literally use the Tokyo Rig sometimes to present finesse baits, sometimes to punch, sometimes to flip, other times to do totally different things. So we're gonna go underwater, we're gonna look at the baits that I use on the Tokyo Rig. We're going to see how you can modify it to best use it for you. It's one of Ike's best things that he brought back from Japan. You can use it in a ton of different ways, so let's head underwater and get to it. All right guys, let's get straight to it today. I have a lot of stuff to talk about. So here is my all time favorite, the Zoom Finesse Worm. Now, the Tokyo Rig was designed to punch heavy cover but it works fantastic when you have scattered grass, sand pockets, just like this. I really love the Zoom Finesse Worm on here because one, it gets bit, and two, this is kind of like a mini drop shot, but it works a lot better when bass are belly on the bottom of warming up or relating to overhead cover. The one thing that's different about the Tokyo Rig is that it drops like an absolute bullet. This is an eighth ounce rig in shallow water here, so I can film it and show you but this drops like an absolute bullet. So if fish are suspended, Tokyo rig, not the way. Here is the Zoom 7-inch finesse worm. It looks good too. We got a little wind blowing here, a little stuff, but you can see how natural the worm looks in the water here. So both Zoom finesse worms are really, really good options on the Tokyo rig. Here you have what's called the dumb worm again, that 7-inch yum dinger. And I like to really fish this when I'm around heavy cover where the worm needs to be a big profile. You can see it even with the cloudiness in the water, that's gonna clear up here in a second. You can see that this zoom worm has a lot different presence in the water than this yum dinger does. The dinger is just a bigger bodied worm and it pushes a lot more water displacement. Sometimes you need that in water that is off color, cloudy or murky, where the Tokyo rig can excel when fish are closer to the cover and need a weedless presentation to get in there. The one thing to consider about this worm is it's going to sink and it's going to fall. So that tail is going to be down, that head is going to be up. It makes it a good presentation when you want to punch through there, when you want to give them something other than a Tokyo rig uh, or a Texas rig, if you will, there for that presentation. It just does a good job coming through cover and it's a different look than they see. Here's one of my favorite things to do when fish are blowing up bait fish or the bait fish spawn is going on. <laughs> There's a minnow right there. Is fish a zoom fluke or a cream fluke on this? You can see here the tail action is enticing. It also looks like the minnow is dying. This is a fantastic lure to fish around beds or post spawn also because that fluke has an intense action on it. And the thing that I like about it is you can give a lot of action to this fluke that normally you would have a slow fall on a weightless fluke. If you Texas rig a fluke, you don't get that same action, but you can see here that tiny fish thinks that this is a fish, right? This looks just like a struggling shad, but you can lay it on the bottom and pop it up. You can do a lot of things, and the Texas rig doesn't give you the same action that the Tokyo rig is going to. It just gives it a more pronounced action. So sometimes that's a good look. Remember, we're fishing pressured water. We want to look different than everybody else. That fluke rig, and you can see it here, and I purposely cast it far away from the camera. You see how it gives that flash? It looks like a shuddering, dying bait fish on the bottom. Those bass are going to come investigate it as you swim it through the zone. It's just another way to present a bait that bass don't normally see. Bass will come a long way to investigate that shiny flash of a fluke on the bottom like that. I've cut a ton of walleye doing this exact same thing in deep water around rock veins and structure. This bait gets down there in a hurry, and it has plenty of action. It's a different look and a different vibe, and sometimes fish need that, right? Sometimes it's better to look different than to look what the same as everyone else is throwing, right? Especially in situations where you're trying to catch more and bigger fish. It's just a great way to present a bait that a lot of people don't do. Next up, we have the Berkeley Tigger Crawl. And the chigger craw is a fantastic option when bass are wanting to hit crawfish or panfish body lures. This is my number one flipping bait here um, around spot cover. I really like the action of the chigger craw because it has subtle and direct action. Those, ca those claws are really subtle. Those flappers are really um, aggressive on a long fall. So if you have like topped out lily pads around sparse cover, this is what's getting the call if I'm flipping in there. Once again, people are punching left and right now. They get out the big sticks and they go punching. 
the Texas rig is a way to look different. You don't have to use as heavy a weight most of the time uh, on a Tokyo rig versus the Texas rig. But the Chicker Craw is a great option here um, because it's a bait that a lot of people have forgotten about when Skeet Reese came out with it. And, you know, the 2000s, it was the Rage, and then it's kind of gone away. Um, but I really like the way that it presents on the Tokyo rig. I think it looks really natural and it looks really good. You can cut off those flapping arms. You can do a lot of different looks with it. Um, it's just something that looks good. But my favorite bait, bar none, to throw on the Tokyo rig is the tube. Look how amazing this tube looks right here. This is a yum four inch tube, and literally it looks knock down, drag out amazing on the Tokyo rig. One, it comes through any cover that you can imagine. Two, it's got a great enticing action. Three, <coughs> it just flat out catches fish. The tube is an overlooked bait, in my opinion. It's a bait that a lot of guys have only started throwing for smallmouth or only started throwing in clear water. People used to flip tubes and catch monsters. I really enjoy throwing a tube on a Texas rig. It's one of those baits that's awesome, but it's even better on a Tokyo rig. I would say that I haven't Texas rigged a tube in a long, long, long time because the Tokyo rig presentation on a tube keeps it up out of the bottom muck, but it's also really, really, really natural. And it all really has a different, unique gliding action. And it has that whip tail, that tail generated motion that we talked about in the finesse worm video that bass really key into. I feel like this profile in the water has gotten me a lot of bites. And it's one that I've wanted to hang on to and kind of be secretive about. Caden fishes a lot of tournaments. He's going to fish this bait a lot this year. I've been testing this bait out a lot on my own. And it just flat out catches them, right? I, I've been going behind guys throwing the tube on the Tokyo rig, fishing docks, and been getting bites where they're not. The only thing that gets more bites on docks for me than this combination right here is probably the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. And that bite won't last forever because I've made videos about that. People are starting to figure that out, that it's not just a smallmouth bait. Same thing with the tube, right? This is going back to the roots of bass fishing. If you watch it here slowed down, you can see that secondary subtle action. It's a straight up killer, right? That tentacle action, the the up and down wavy, the weedlessness of this bait coming through there is just flat out lights out. Same thing with another traditional flipping punching bait here, the Missile Baits D-Bomb. The D-Bomb looks fabulous underwater as well. And it is a bait that has subtle action. It's designed to have subtle action. It's designed to come through cover. But when you put it on a Tokyo rig, it gives it a whole new thing. From a distance, this bait looks just like a sunfish swimming around and rooting around on the bottom. I've had bass absolutely annihilate this bait for me this year, flipping and pitching around sparse cover or around heavy cover. The D-Bomb is fantastic. Now, one thing that I'm doing with my weight here and sparse cover, I'm not flipping it like a traditional punching weight. I'm flipping it upside down. I like the bell of the bottom of the Tokyo rig to be on the bottom and the pointed to be on the top because it comes through grass and weeds better that way. You can see it here. It's a pretty good example on that D-bomb. It really, really, really does come through that sparse bottom cover like this a lot better. Whereas the Texas rig's lost in the bottom or going to get snagged up. This does a fantastic job coming snag free through all kinds of bottom composition, all kinds of cover. I love fishing sand spot with this bait because literally it allows me to bring it through that lingvaya, to bring it through kind of that scattered grass type feel we have up here, that Great Lakes type grass, and it does a fantastic job. So rig that bullet weight upside down like a bell, right? Last here, we've got another category, finessed creature baits. Killer's already made a whole video about the Dirty Sanchez rig. These baits look fantastic on a Tokyo rig. Here's a big bite baits, um, flipping, um, crawl and it literally looks amazing and it has that subtle subdued action but it's once again presenting more action than it would be just straight up texas rigging it flipping it in there you get another dimension of that action when it's set off the bottom with that tokyo rig and it gives it a much more lively action it gives it a much more realistic action so if fish are bottom oriented but they want to eat something that's right in front of their face versus nose down and eat something on the bottom this is a fantastic option it does a great job uh, as a flipping bait here, slow down, you can see that subtle action, those subtle flappers moving up and down. I always put toothpicks in my finesse baits because I like it to stand up and be really out. And then here is my probably favorite soft plastic bait of all time, the Berkeley Pit Boss. 
I think it's one of the best soft plastics ever made because it has a diverse action, has a great profile. But you can see here on the Tokyo rig, it looks mesmerizing, right? Those flapping action, that subtle wave, the profile on it, bass just straight up eat this bait better than many other baits in the same category that I've found. And it is lights out, right? It has amazing action on the Tokyo rig. It's going to get you bit when you're throwing it, but literally the Tokyo rig is another way to present baits that fish normally don't see. Most guys, eight out of 10 guys are going to come down in Texas rig. And then one of those guys is going to punch. If you're the one guy throwing the Tokyo rig, you're giving the bass something different. And that's what they like. You can throw any lure on this thing. It is going to enhance the action. Um, I'm going to do a whole video about throwing swim baits on the Tokyo rig and dragging them along the bottom because that's a whole nother conversation for another day. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed going underwater with us, looking at the Tokyo rig, looking at the way we use it with flukes, with craws, with creature baits, with straight tail worms, all kinds of different things. I fish pressured water all the time. A lot of us fish pressured water all the time. There's so many people out fishing now. What you want to do is try to find ways to be different. The Tokyo rig is a different presentation. It's that mini drop shot, right? That's why I love it so much. It's been so good to me. Hey. If you like what we're doing, give us a like, give us a subscribe. We're growing in the channel. In the comment section, let us know what you want us to do next time. We'll see you out there, folks.